guys, welcome to the Best Practice Show. My name is Kirk Barrett, and I am your host. And I just want to thank you for showing up. And you're going to enjoy this. This is going to be a lot of fun. If you're looking to figure out how all these things come together, this is a great place to start. And you're really going to enjoy this with Dr. Aaron Elliott. Now, if you're joining us for the first time, and a lot of you did this through the COVID conference, we watched the metrics. It's so cool to watch all these young dentists and dental students get involved. I want to do two things. Number one, I just want to welcome you to a community where we're all just about learning here. There's no egos. I want you to ask great questions. As I'm talking with Aaron today, if you have questions, add them to the feed and we'll dish it to the expert and we'll get it straight from her in this whole process. So thank you for showing up. Number two, I want to encourage you, wherever you're listening to this podcast, if you're listening on iTunes, Stitcher, you know, Spotify, doesn't matter. Just swipe down to where the subscribe button is. Hit the subscribe button so that you can show up every single week with us. You're going to see every single week, we're going to bring you a brand new key opinion leader in dentistry and give you some great information just so you can have a better practice and a better life. And then also, I don't even know how these things work, but during the conference, we had a lot of people asking us questions last year. So we created a private Facebook group. We're still kind of figuring out how it works, but over 13,000 of you signed up and it was so cool because it was cool to watch people help people and share solutions and just create a support group. So it's more than us just offering help. It's dentists and team members helping other dentists and team members. So make sure you join us over there where the conversation always continues. And also one more thing, we take a lot of show notes here. So after this show is over, you're going to see, I'm going to hand it over to our writers and our writers are going to put together all the show notes. So everything Aaron and I talk about today, all the links um, and some of the things that she, she does, you can just swipe up to the show notes that are below this show and it'll take you right to what we're talking about. I'm gonna make this the easiest learning ever for you. And also keep sending us suggestions for shows, things you guys, you guys wanna see, we're lining up now um, and we'll put them into play. Now my guest today, Aaron, I did not even really know you all that well and I, I heard about you, I didn't know you, you know, I, I and and people are like, oh, you gotta get Aaron on and I'm like, okay, well who, I think I know. And then you came on the conference and then, like I was telling you before we went live, I'm like, holy moly, she's pretty sharp. Do you know what I mean? So I always like, today we're going to be talking about a very hot topic because people haven't figured out how to put this together, but I always like people to know who they're listening to first before we get started. So who is Dr. Aaron Elliott? Um, it's actually Aaron Elizabeth Elliott. So, well, you know, a lot of my friends like to call me triple E, but I'm just too much of a nerd, so I prefer E cubed. There you go. Um, yeah. And if you ever did see the rap videos, that is my rap name. So, yeah. um, but I grew up in Southern California, and but I I left California almost as soon as possible. I graduated high school and took off in the family RV across the country to land at Houghton College, which was a small um, NAIA school, kind of in the middle of nowhere near Buffalo and Rochester, New York, go Bills, pretty excited to see them. Um, and I was there for a soccer and academic scholarship. I, you know, I always had my career in mind. I knew I was going to be a trauma surgeon or something super exciting uh, where I had to make split, uh, split second decisions. And then I met my husband and I was like, oh yeah, I kind of want a family and a life too. And my dad was a dentist. So I um, started gearing towards dental school. And what I didn't realize is just how amazing dentistry is and how exciting it is. And I still have to make a lot of split second decisions. Um, plus we get a lot of um, flexibility in our life. And so far it's been a ride. I've been in practice. Oh, I went to Creighton University, All right. Omaha, Nebraska, and I graduated in 2003. So I've, I've been around for a little while now. And it was almost immediately after dental school, we moved to North Idaho, where I am uh, recording from currently in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. So if you've never heard of it, look it up. It's, it's really beautiful. Um, we've definitely been discovered, however, and we, I've joined Post Falls Family Dental as an associate, and I've been a partner for the last almost 10 years, and things are good. Things are going really well. 
That's awesome. And Coeur Lane is gorgeous. Like, that's awesome. I mean, you've kind of taken the trek all over the place. That's pretty far to go. And then to Creighton and back. And that's always fascinating. I do want to know this. Like, you're doing a lot of speaking. How did how the heck did you get into speaking in that? That's, whole a, that's a great question because I did not want to. Like, I avoided speech class in college. It was a requirement, but I find I found a way around it. Okay. I um, joined a business group and every week you have to give a minute talk and I would just like break out in hives and get a shake in my voice. So it is kind of, you know, man plans and God laughs. So it was really kind of because I got recruited, to be honest. Um, I, I became successful in sleep. I integrated it into my practice. And I think that that's kind of just this holy grail or, or it's so hard to achieve that people wanted to find out how I did it. And so I spent like an entire winter in my on my off time putting a two day course together on implementing. And I really wanted to focus on almost step by step because I went and learned as much as I could, um, took the nuggets out that actually applied to my patients. But it was a it was a big learning curve and figuring out, oh, my gosh, we need this now. And what paperwork do we need? And so I really try to hand it over and fast forward so many of those mistakes. Yeah. And then, but then I was like, oh my gosh, I still hate speaking in front of people. And so I went to Toastmasters every week and all those things. But really, the, I think the biggest um, thing that put me on the map was when Mike Detola asked me to do a 15 minute talk on sleep. And I was like, oh yeah, I could do a TED talk. Well, I didn't know I was saying yes to speaking in front of 8,000 people at DS World on the main stage. So that really kind of gets you over your public um, speaking fear really yeah, quickly. Yeah, that's thrown in the ring. No, Mike is pretty, yeah. a pretty special, special guy. Like, you got to be on your toes oh, yeah. around him. That's huge that he threw you in. That was your first, like, major? Uh, yeah, I think I had, like, a... 300 maybe before that a few but really i was going to offices to do this two-day course and then i was um kind of yeah just here and there but that was trial by fire i suppose yeah that's crazy it's really cool to see how your career has just taken off in this now i do want to talk about the why you know because you hear this all the time you know this is such this topic is not going away it is here to stay but I hope so. I hope so too. And <laughs> why, why is this such a big topic in the world of dental? We're going to break this down, but why is it such a big topic? Because it's not getting diagnosed and people are getting skipped over all the time in the medical world. And I don't, I don't want to put down our medical colleagues by any means, because I get it. They're so busy. They get 10 minutes to talk about, you know, 20 different ailments. But if you look at what they're focused on is hel helping someone with their diabetes, putting them on blood pressure medications that are difficult to control the hypertension, and then their um, acid reflux and, and insomnia, they just can just put out fires. But why not look at what's really causing it? And they just don't have the time to do that. So and it gets skipped over so much. But what I realize is that dentists are on the front lines. We know our patients, we get more time with them, hygienists especially. We're looking at their airways all day long. And we have the time to bring up the conversation and, and connect the dots for the patient. We have their health history at our fingertips. Plus, there's a lot of dental signs and symptoms. As soon as I see someone's anatomy, I'm like, you have sleep apnea. Because it's not an old fat man's disease, and unfortunately in America, that's how people look at it as an old fat man's disease. And I treat young, petite people, healthy people all the time. Yeah. And I think this is an epidemic and tell them you're the expert, but it isn't that t type of disease anymore. Now kids undiagnosed, you know, you hear these stories all the time in different communities. A young child is not focusing in school. They bring in the parent, the parent talks to the teacher, whatever, and says the kid can't focus. They go to the doctor. The doctor writes a prescription for speed. The kid's on speed for the rest of their life. And no one asks any questions to do a further diagnosis. Like we're, I think we're on the cusp of a something very, very big here. I mean, you see this all the time, right? 
all the time. And it just breaks my heart. And even when I coach the parent, you know, you, the ENT, I, if you go to this one, they're just going to tell you your kid to use nasal spray. Um, if you talk to your pediatrician, they're going to say, oh, great, here goes Aaron again, Dr. Elliot talking our airway stuff. Um, it's not voodoo. Oxygen is not anything crazy to, <laughs> to get to this kid. Sleep is not crazy to want to achieve. So I don't understand why there's so much resistance. And I was, you know, I, I try to get to teachers, daycares, um, and I had my foot in the door at the pediatric offices. They had a study club for all the pediatric offices, the physicians in the area, and then COVID hit. And so they, as soon as I spoke up at one of their meetings about why I was even there, it's like they leaned in, you could see their body language, they were listening. And so I just hope that I get that opportunity again. I think it's, what's interesting is when I first started in 2009, people did think I was crazy when I brought up how they slept to them in an exam or even with their child. Um, but now patients aren't so, it's not so out of left field. I think the awareness is out there, the rise of Fitbits and iWatches and all those things where people are tracking their sleep, even though the algorithms aren't totally there. It, there's at least an awareness that sleep is important to total body wellness. And with all the internet appliances and all these things, I think that the consumer is more aware that the dentist can be involved in help. Right. Now, take, I want to take the vantage point of being a young dentist. Like maybe I've seen you lectured. I go, Aaron, this is spot on. But I also, I want, I'm a, you know, I'm a dentist getting started. Like I'm trying to pay debt. How do I even start this journey? I'm sure you hear this question all the time. How would I monetize this? Like, and you can't, I, I would imagine you're going to say it's not about the monetization, but at some point you're going to be spending yeah. time doing this, right? I feel like I'm a really nice philanthropic person. However, right. you have, you can't go into debt. And my, I know one thing I learned very early is what my time is worth. Right. And when you are a young dentist, you need to learn how to do a class two composite in 10 minutes, not three hours. Mm -hmm. And so I, my suggestion would be learn about it, get the cerebral knowledge, learn how to talk to your patients and your friends and family and screen for it. But as far as like implementing it, um, I think that's a, I think that's a tough place to start when you need to work, really work on efficiencies, but also learning how to communicate with your patients and, you know, present treatment. So, there's a lot coming at us that especially you don't learn in dental school. And so I just, I tell them to really get good at talking about it, screening for it, and maybe refer to someone who does this and deals with medical insurance and paperwork and just don't get stuck in the weeds. Yeah. Cause the first you, you've heard this too. As soon as you say medical insurance, I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Cause there's all these misconceptions, but let's yeah. Let's start putting this together. So when you talk about general dentistry and sleep, how do they work together? I mean, how did you put it together in your, pre I mean, where do I even start? Yeah. Well, mine was a slow brew. It was an evolution because it was so new. Medical insurance didn't know what to do with us. Um, where to get, so with general dentistry, I love, dentistry too much to give it up fully. And so I had to find a way to um, have them work together. And so what I did at first is I kind of separated sleep on a certain day. Um, and then it evolved into now I have a um, sleep champion, as I call her, with her own column that really does most of the organizing and and day to day stuff, deliveries, adjustments, those sort of things. I'm involved in the consults. And then I have a financial person that does the insurance. Okay. So wait, I, I want you to go back to that. So you oh. pick, you, you picked a day. So there's a certain day of the week that you probably just focus on sleep and then describe, cause I love your word champion sleep. Cha I, I use that word too. What is a sleep champion and what do they do in your office? Now, if you go to a physician's office, how, how often do you actually talk to the physician? And if you do, for how long, right? So I, um, what Sam is, Samantha, is a mid-level provider, essentially. It's an assistant that had a special interest in this topic, 
has good organizational and people skills. And it gave her an opportunity to do something different than dentistry. And she does a, fan, a fabulous job, but we all work together, but really it's a system, right? Mm -hmm. And so we all know what, she, what each other's roles are. And as soon as a patient calls in, um, it says I'm having connection issues. So no, I didn't know if I should pause. Clear, okay. Clear as day. That's why I paused earlier. Um, when a patient calls in or comes up from hygiene, we know what to do from A to Z yeah. so that nothing gets missed. Medical insurance, it's possible to get paid by them. In fact, I look at it as a challenge, like, oh yeah, you you are going to pay it. Your policy says this, um, but they do make it difficult. I will tell you that, but you have to kind of view it as a challenge. Um, right. And so from A to Z, we kind of know what to do and it's not me doing all of the work. And being able to let go is a difficult thing for a dentist. But then I see some dentists have absolutely nothing to do with it and, and you know, embrace this champion concept too well, where it's like, oh, I don't have to worry about it anymore. So I think there needs to be a, like a happy medium of being involved, making sure everything's getting done, um, but you still get to enjoy your dentistry. Like I said, I used to do it on one day, but I had a goal of working three days a week because I was traveling and it was so difficult being um, trying to schedule all that. And so I went down to Monday through Wednesday and, and actually Sam's working today right. um, doing deliveries because we have doctors there and we're, she's still working while I'm talking to you. That's so awesome. So I'm just fascinated. Do you mind if I ask? So Monday through, so you work three days a week. So what days do you, can I just ask like what days you do sleep or you're focused on sleep and what days you do general changes? How much? So, so no, I work three columns. So I have two oh, columns yeah. of dentistry and then that third column of sleep that Sam owns okay. and I go in on consults. Oh, that's awesome. So it's almost like people use the word phantom column, like where there's, but it's not, it's a designated column and then you do yeah. consults. Now I do want you to go back to this. You expanded the medical insurance thing. Can you talk about the myths or the misconceptions people have when they're like, Hey, Aaron, I don't even want to get involved with medical insurance. I'm having a hard enough time with dental insurance. What have you learned about that up to this point in your career? As soon as Medicare passed that, the E0486, that's the oral plans. As soon as Medicare passed that, it will be covered um, by a dentist. And a policy was set. Pretty much every other private insurance after that sets a policy for oral appliances. And so we we do utilize a third party to check into benefits and that sort of thing. But the the myths are that they don't pay. They do, if you have the right documentation. The other myth is, is that they don't pay well, which is often true. It's right. usually the blue cross blue shields of whatever state, like Tennessee is terrible, but North Carolina is very reasonable but you don't have to be in network. And so staying out of network with medical, you can kind of build what you want and the medical insurance will help. And the third thing is that you can't do sleep without medical insurance. I know several offices that are on a cash um, only basis. They just don't even deal with medical insurance. But of course that's a more difficult thing to sell, but what I don't understand in this is, my friend Missy Fryer speaking through me, but she's like, we get people to sign up for Invisalign or aligners every day. Yep. Comprehensive care, cash fee, insurance doesn't help, $5,000, $6,000, whatever. Why aren't we able to present an oral plan that could improve the quality of their life and even extend their life for $2,500 and not get them to accept treatment? Sure. And it's because people are so reliant on medical insurance. And in the dental world, we don't think that way. Right. Physicians are so reliant on medical insurance. That's the first question they ask. They don't care about my certifications and initials after my name. Their first question is, how much is it? Do you bill medical? Yeah. But you can do this without medical physicians referring to you. In fact, I don't, we tell you not to start out that way. Cause if you, if they refer you a patient and you don't even know what to do with it, <laughs> with them, that's not, that's not the best place to start. To start with your staff, their, um, your team, their spouses, your family, your friends, 
get a workflow, get a system, learn the pitfalls and the ins and outs of appliances and deliveries and, and side effects and, and just keep plugging away. Yeah. Don't give up. Anytime someone gives me an excuse, I can find a way around it. Love it. You'll find a way. I love that. Oh, I have to show you this. What's that? That's because it's kind of my mantra in life. So what this is, is a bracelet I wear. It says FIOS. Okay. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah. F-I-O-S. And it stands for figure it out stupid. Or uh, silly. Sorry. Uh, silly. Silly. Okay. <laughs> so my, my thing is if there's a problem, yo, I'll solve it. No, we can figure it out on how to um, overcome it. There you go. There you go. I love that. Now, um, so many other thoughts come to mind on this is obviously when you're building a practice like this, you've got designated columns. You're building a reputation for this and people are coming to yeah. you. Tell, me, tell us about the evolution because you probably have people seeking you out for this now. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, I ran, in, I ran into a friend and, um, at a hotel in Seattle on our way to a Seahawks game. Um, so it wasn't that random to see him, but we were down at the breakfast bar and he's like, Hey, Aaron. And I said, Hey, Sean. He's like, I was just thinking about you last night. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> um, but he said, no, my roommate said I snored so bad that I had to talk to you as soon as we got back into town and here you are. And, uh, and he goes, I don't even know what you do or why I need to talk to you. But they said, I snore to talk to you. That's like what I'm known for. And like I said, some of it was hitting the pavement, taking any advantage of like physicians or nurses I played soccer with or went to church with or whatever it was, just to get my foot in the door to educate them. Um, but I never actually educated them. I came saying, hey, we're gonna be screening our patients for this. This is what we look for. I'm a lowly dentist. How can I best refer them to you? So that they can get um, what I'm looking for instead of, hey, give me all your referrals. Yeah. And pretty soon that evolved to the point. And, and also the biggest marketing tool I have, because remember, time is my most valuable thing. The biggest mar marketing tool I have is sending letters after each time we see the patient progress notes. Wow. And so I get a ton of referrals from people because they don't know. They're like, oh, this is this is what she does. Like, I've never even met them. So and. My other piece of advice is don't go straight to the sleep physician. Yes, you, you'll need to build a relationship with um, them, but there's probably been other dentists that have already um, hit them up, but it's the primary cares, the nurse practitioners, endocrinologists, psychiatrists, yeah. uh, marriage counselors. There are so many people that are in the trenches with people that need help that you could, you chiropractors, naturopaths, so many people need our help and these people are exposed to them and interact with them every day. They just don't look for it, don't know what to look for. And there's, a, there's some fear in the medical world because if they bring it up, they don't know enough about the appliance to, so then they just don't bring it up. Right. So I try to arm them. Yeah. And those signs are everywhere. So I'll, I, you know, I'm 50. So 10 years ago, it was probably 10 years ago, or I don't know, it was the AACD in um, New Orleans. Dr. Sean Anderson, God love you. We shared a room because we went down there and he told me first morning, he's like, dude, you have got to get to a doctor. You snored so loud last night. I actually heard you gasping for air. And that was the first sign because Sarah, my wife's always slept through like it's, and I went and got diagnosed at 28 interruptions per hour. This is like not a small deal. And I, you're not an old fat man. No, I was, I was actually doing yeah. hands at the time. So yeah. I'm like, you know, and, and you told me this, like everybody, you know how you find an Iron Man? They tell you that they, you know, <laughs> I know your husband's done it, but I was thinking, no, I'm in the best shape of my life. Why would I, you know, I wouldn't have these challenges, but you're right. There's so many signs out there. And, you know, I think as a community, as a world, we're going to be very astute to them now. Oh, you just use, use so many things. Talk about the community that you've built around you. I have a question. Do you work with a myofunctional therapist? Like, and how does that work? Yeah, so you've probably had a lot of guests on that talk a lot about that. Right. I tend to be a little bit more practical. I don't, that's not the right word. I practice in Idaho. And so to get people to, to like brush their teeth twice a day, um, you know, the compliance isn't always there. So 
we actually don't have a lot of myofunctional therapists in okay. town, like none that I can think of. Um, so I think it's a very important thing. If you do it, it works really well. I don't have someone to use. And then if I told them they needed to go to a myofunctional therapist and pay them out of pocket, I don't know if it, that would actually happen. Mm -hmm. I try to simplify things for patients, remove the hurdles, like to get to the help they need. And that's, Oftentimes it is an appliance or a CPAP if they if they need that. Um, you know, I, I'm not there to just sell appliances. Right. So we so I am so I do take that view of an appliance works well. Um, it is and if it's someone really likes the way they feel and they want to graduate from there, then we'll talk about ortho surgery, full mouth rehab, all of those types of things. But I just want to give them something like just that simple entry point. Right. to how they could feel because getting people to even admit they snore is one thing. I've learned a lot about the psychology of men. Wait, wait, I don't snore. I don't grind. You yes. Know, you know, how yes. Grind, right? And, and, and oftentimes the spouses sometimes are the ones like not just nudging them, but shoving them to go get help. But like you're what I had a lot of wives that say, no, the snoring soothing, you know, I know he's, he's still alive or, or I'm just used to it or whatever it is. Um, so getting them to admit they have a problem is the first step. And then then saying, okay, so now you have to go see the sleep physician, go spend the night somewhere you don't want to spend the night to go get a machine you never wanted in the first place. Do you know how many patients followed through? Like none. None. And so, so we make it very, very easy to get to that sleep study. And that's where so much of the value occurs. That is where their eyes are open. I literally look for this on their face. Every time I go over a sleep study, they're like, whoa. Right. You know, I thought I just snored. But 28 times an hour, which really, when I show them that that's actually 170 times during the night. Did you see my math there real quick? Yeah. That's actually 170 times your sleep was interrupted. That is so much more eye-opening than the the phone call they get from the sleep lab a month after they already had the test where they think they didn't sleep well anyways and say, yeah, you have it, go get your machine. And so uh, I think that's where the medical world really misses is connecting with the patient, finding their pain points and helping them realize they need the help. You'll get far more compliance when they understand the disease of what we're trying to, trying to treat. Right. Now that bracelet probably fits you. I've never heard you talk about your bracelet, but like that bracelet fits you because of this topic for many reasons. Now, cause this is an unchartered territory. Like there's not a lot of people, Aaron, when you were learning about this, that, like, let me show you the system. Like you had to figure a lot of this stuff. Out. I did, but I had a, I do have to say I had a great mentor in Kent Smith. Um, he was very practical as well okay. and didn't just speak in generalities of, uh, you know, there, it's, I love science. Right. I love that there's research and we have proof that appliances work and oxygen's good for your body. But there was not a lot of practicality of this is how you do it in your practice. And, and Kent's very good at helping, helping me navigate that too. Right. What was one of your biggest mistakes that others could learn from? Just say, don't do this. I did this and it didn't work when it came to sleep in dentistry anything come to mind um being too pushy i i knew they had a problem right and they were gonna help i was gonna help them whether they liked it or not and the wall it, it became thick and to the point where they kind of got turned off like she just wants to sell appliances i'm like no i want to save your life right um so i just i asked questions to get them talking to hear their pain points and say you know I know it's probably not comfortable sleeping on the couch. If you ever wanted to talk about how you could get back in the bedroom, just let me know. Right now people are chiming in cause you're, you're touching some pretty touchy subjects. So I got a question here from someone on Facebook. I was an advocate for my daughter, literally had to switch pediatricians to get her tonsils out. She is sleeping better. She, she gets now gets A's and B's. My office doesn't, uh, does sleep testing and our patients are so thankful. So um, is that something you see a lot? Yes. And just, I, I said that, like, I have to coach the parents, like, 
go go get evaluated by this orthodontist because so many orthodontists think, oh no, we'll just wait till they're 12. Let's just wait till they're done growing and their sutures are sealed and they've been sick this whole many this whole time. Why are we not expanding and, and intervening and growing jaws earlier? That I'll never understand. So I have certain orthodontists that understand airway. Um, we do a program in our practice called Healthy Start, and my Healthy Start champion is a hygienist that le that has an ortho background. And then finding an ENT. Sometimes if we can get the child breathing through their nose, like God intended, um, the tons will shrink. But we do have an ENT in our back pocket that understands why we're referring to him. It's not about sore throats. It's about sleep. Right. Now, do you touch, obviously we're going to talk about like the dental aspect and you're, you're, you're an incredible learner and a great teacher on all these things. But I also want to ask you about the other pieces that are influencing this. Like, have you seen Social Dilemma? I don't know if you've seen that movie at all. I don't want to watch it, actually. <laughs> why? Tell me why. Because I don't want to feel bad about something I'm going to continue to do. I know, I know. And I did. So I, I did that. So it's 90 minutes and it really freaked me out because it made me, it, you know, it's a documentary from some of the starters of social media and the engagement factors off the charts. So let's put that aside. But here's my question. Are kids growing up now, how they're communicating, affecting this or exacerbating this in ways we can't even see? Because you know, I got four kids and like, they just communicate differently. Um, I mean, to the point where I got to steal devices at times. So it, do you see that as a challenge that makes this a bigger topic in dentistry in the future? I honestly don't know about that. Um, maybe I would say that it's all about convenience now. We're just like, go, go, go. So we tend to eat more processed foods. Kids, I mean, so many of those we want, we put our babies in safety bubbles. And so all of the food like disintegrates, like they don't have to chew. Our jaws are made to actually grow and expand. Um, allergens, inflammatory um, producers. There's so many things probably in the way that our lifestyle of convenience um, exacerbates inflammation, tonsil enlargement, obligatory mouth breathing, no filtration of bacteria, ear infections, all of those things go, it's just a bad downward cycle, I think, because once those tonsils are so large and they can't breathe through the nose, there's no chance to catch up. Right, right. And on this topic, you know, it's anyone's guess, but you're very involved. You get to hear on the inside of, like how big is this topic for the future of dentistry from your vantage point? Oh, I hope it's big, but we got to find a way to make it easier to get the help that patients need. And I have to say that um, Dave Schwartz, our current president of the American Academy of Dental Sleep Medicine, he's out of Chicago. He is my hero because he is finally advocating for dentists instead of us just sucking up to the sleep physicians. He is, we should be partners with the sleep physicians and not these pests that they try to keep down. And why and what, can I ask you, why are we not? It's territorial pissing match. I don't know. So the, the new president of the American Academy of Sleep Medicine, I'll never forget. This was a year or two ago. Okay. She says in her opening address, we are, ha we have a shortage of sleep um, professionals. We need to recruit more mid-level providers. We need to get more people to, to the um, specialty or residency. We need to increase our numbers so that we don't have such a shortage. And also my goal for this year is going to increase the amount of undiagnosed. We currently have 80 to 90% of the sleep apnea population is undiagnosed. So we're gonna improve those numbers. And third, we are going to keep the dentists down because they are trying to invade our territory. It's like, we could help them. If we can manage the mild to moderates, they can deal with the severes and the difficult, you know, patients and we can help them. So hopefully there's some sleep physicians in certain communities that um, look to us as, as colleagues.
Yeah. One thing I know, nobody puts dentists in corners. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, it's true. I mean, like, this is a very noble profession. I don't even know how I got into it, but like, it's so great because people care. Like, yeah. even COVID last year, no matter who you called, they're like, I'm in, I'm going to help. Like, it's yeah. so cool to watch people care, not just about the profession but the overall health of just our communities. Yeah. It's yes, we're more than tooth mechanics. And I will say too, I think the future, it would be great if they did, if it wasn't made to be so scary, if there wasn't failures right off the bat, like right. who's gonna keep, I had a bite change. I said this to, I was lecturing in Lafayette, Louisiana and this guy says, one of the appliances I made, one of the first appliances I made, they had a little bite change. So. I stopped making them. And then I said to him, I'm like, can I ask you this? I'm like, have you ever had a sensitive crown or a patient with a sensitive crown? He's like, yeah. And I'm like, and you did another one? Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, okay, okay, I get your point. Um, you know, there will be frustrations. There will be some, I mean, sometimes that you just eat the cost of the appliance, whatever it is, like it counters as a learning case. But once you just continue on, like it does, become natural you know it's just like okay patients here this is what we do we all know our role um yeah medical insurance is going to pay go to a cash basis with really generous payment plans if you really want to get going yeah make great. appliances for cost just Absolutely. do it Absolutely. and there's so many patients so you ask where is this going in dentistry i hope it explodes we have probably four to six patients a day coming into our practice, if not more that need our help. And oftentimes we're the first and only person to, to tell them about it. And I'll tell you, if you help them come to that place of realization, they knew they were suffering. They just didn't know what the answer was because they've been to other doctors and they were just given pills or whatever. Um, and that we actually offered them a solution and made them feel better for pretty low cost. They are your biggest advocate. You're not fixing teeth. You're changing lives. It's awesome. Yeah. Great question here from one of our live viewers. Nagy asked this question. So is there a solid scheme for diagnosis and treatment? What do you think? A solid scheme? Solid like, scheme or framework for diagnosis and treatment. I, I think. So that's there's, there's different avenues to it and it depends on your state and comfort level but we do a combination of referral out because we have great we do have some great um sleep professionals in our area but they're often booked out and it's just like one more um, step for patients we also have home sleep test units in our practice where we have a online sleep physician look at the data and, and diagnose dentist cannot diagnose. And then lastly, we use what's called sleeptest.com. Amazing company. They, the patient, I mean, they call right away, the, they call the patient right away, get set up and schedule a telehealth med, um, conference face-to-face -face with a sleep physician. That sleep physician orders the sleep test, they mail it to them. And then everything, we get the letter of medical necessity, the referral, everything. So it's, we do a combination of all three of those. All right. And you, and know, uh, you can oversee uh, everything. Can you titrate virtually and all that kind of stuff or you, you could do a lot telehealth, but, um, in Idaho, we, you know, it's a, it's still a smaller town. We don't have a ton of traffic. People don't mind coming in. So we still do a lot of face to face, um, in yeah, face to face interaction. All right. Now I know you do a lot of speaking. You also do a lot of training and you, before we went live, you're like, Oh, I went to, uh, Milwaukee and I train an office there. I want you to tell people what you do. So like, let's say I'm a general dentist and I'm like, I want to do this. What the heck would you do if you came to my office? Would you help me implement this? Help my team? Cause I have a hard enough time understanding it, but I got a group of people here with me. And I want them. so what do you do? Can you tell us what you do when you train? An oh, we just, I just bring my sleep champion or my financial person, sometimes both. And we travel and, um, just get the whole team on board. The right. first first day is a lot of lecture, background, foundation, few jokes, some inappropriate. Um, then the second day, um, just kind of see, do hands on with like two or three patients, uh, see how we do a consult, how we hand it off to the champion, what each person does. But that's, I mean, I, I 
I'm only filling in the gaps because where there's no dental conferences right now. My main focus is the 3D dentist courses. And we now have an online course as well. Um, we have, I, I'm, I am so fatigued from virtual learning. In fact, I'm just not a virtual learner. Wait, and you know, so, like this isn't just fun. Steve. I know. I just want to reach out and touch you, though. Um, we so we are doing live courses um, out in Raleigh at the 3D Dentist um, headquarters. With T-Bone. And yes, with yeah. T-Bone, you don't need to own Conebeam to come to the sleep implementation course. Okay. And then we're doing a, a West Coast one. Okay. So that's my main focus. Um, but it is a two day course. And every time a dentist signs up and it's just the dentist coming, we let them know you're really going to want your team here. You know, at least a representative from each department is they'll come alone. And then every single time they say, God, I wish I would have brought, you know, so and so. So we do have the online course to bring back to your whole team. But I would say, from front to back, that's the most important thing. It's the hygienist job to screen, look at health history, ask further questions. Are they taking melatonin? What other over-the-counter medications are they taking? Connecting the dots for patients, starting the conversation. Yeah. Really, so my my goal, my job is when I come in to do the exam, I just give them a stamp of approval. Let's get you back for a sleep consult. Because so many dentists, like, you have three minutes to talk about their, well, not their latest vacation because no one's traveling, but um, their kids, this whole COVID crap going on, uh, their dental work, and then sleep. And so many dentists go down this rabbit trail of lecturing and educating the patient. We like to bring them back so that we can get them talking. So anyways, we um, do a lot of that so that the, it, the hygienists are on board, the assistants. I have the champion, but my other two chair side assistants can deliver and do um, follow ups in the front desk has to answer phone calls. So yeah, it's really important to get everyone on board. Cool. And I want people to check out what you do. So can you just tell them I'm going to put up, put up your website here, but what am I going to find when I go to your website? What do you do? How does it work? All that kind of, I mean, you shared what you do for an office, but talk about your website. Oh, what website? The three D dash. Oh, okay, <laughs> I've got a few. Um, the three D dash dentist. So what three D dentist is is started by T Bone or Tarun Agrawal, who is a spectacular mentor in my life. Mentor meaning he pushes me to to do more dentistry, uh, procedural menu, adding technology into my practice, um, just practical. In integration of technology and dentistry and even some practice management. So that's what 3D Dentist is um, aimed to do is to help you utilize your technology and increase the procedures you offer. So it's an awesome, awesome group of people I get to, I feel blessed to be part of. That's awesome. Now I'm going to have you back for other topics and other um, things uh, along the lines here of, of this whole thread. But I want you, any last thoughts you have, like words of wisdom. So maybe I'm a young dentist, I'm watching, I'm like, this makes so much sense. What, yeah. what are some last thoughts you'd have? Go, go learn about it, um, first of all, because, and then actually utilize it. So if you go learn something and then do nothing, like I said, just start talking to family and friends. So it becomes, you become more confident in it. Um, what other things can they do? I would, <laughs> you're putting me on the spot, Kurt. I know, I know. I, you don't have to come up with anything. Bro. I think the biggest part is you just got to start, you know? That's, I, oh, that's what I was going to say. I just had this post on LinkedIn recently. It's like dentists are so good at the what ifs. Now I'm a let in my partner is too. So we just, we work so well together. Cause I'm like, Hey, if I can associate, and we, can we both work three days a week? And he's like, okay. We didn't even look at the numbers. Um, hey, we're gonna buy cone beam and the new Omnicam, Sarek. Is that okay? Uh, okay, I'll talk to the banker. I mean, we are just like jump in the deep end and we'll figure it out. But there's people on the other end of that. It's like the what if, what if this, what if that? I'm like, that never happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. maybe once in my career and everyone in the dentist think it's like every time. So um, the other quote that I, that I love is um, complexity is the enemy of implementation. So keep it simple. 
just keep it simple. Just start talking to patients. Don't think about all the hundred different appliances and get overwhelmed. You just got to start somewhere. Yeah. And you may make and you make make a few mistakes, and that's okay. Well, yeah. You're not you're not going to kill anyone. I promise you. Right. So our we have a good mutual friend, Dr. Mark Murphy who I love dearly. And you know, he, he said the same thing. He's like, anytime somebody says it doesn't work, you inevitably you found out they haven't even started. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you yes. know, dentists learn to think in terms of exceptions and all like, sometimes you just gotta ready, fire, then aim later. Cause you're going to learn by doing, you know, yep. and getting, getting involved. So get involved. This is awesome. Aaron, I, I want to be respectful of your time. I have 34 more questions, but we'll, we'll save that for another show, another topic. And so thank you so much for being on. I really appreciate it. Check out her yeah. website, which is 3d-dentist.com where you'll see more of what she does. You can also send her an email at Aaron Elliott DDS at gmail.com. If you have questions, I know this is a big topic. And uh, the learning on this will never end. And so, Aaron, thank you so much. So stick thank around. You. Say goodbye to everybody else. So thank you guys for tuning in to the Best Practices Show. If you enjoyed today, which I hope you did, just do us a favor. Hit the share button. Keep sending us suggestions for shows that you guys would like to see in the future. We'll line them up, not only with Aaron, but other people. And until we see you next time, keep watching the Best Practices Show. You guys enjoy the rest of your day.